Hey guys, welcome back to my basic series where I'm answering all of your biggest questions about skincare. Today, we're gonna be talking about sunscreens. We're gonna talk about three things why it's an essential part of your skincare routine, what the difference between chemical and physical sunscreens are, and the right way to apply it to protect your skin this summer. Okay, so first off, everybody should wear sunscreen. Every damn day. I've heard some people say they don't need it because they have beautiful skin and they never burn. But preventing sunburn isn't the only reason why you should wear sunscreen. Because even if you don't burn, the sun is still damaging your skin. You just don't notice it's even happening. Okay, so check this out. There was a guy who drove a delivery truck for 28 years. Every day the sun would shine through the window and onto his face. If you look at the left side of his face, it literally looks 10 years older than the other side. It's crazy. That's what happens when you get repeated sun exposure over time. He didn't burn every day, but clearly it didn't do him any favors. And so that's why sunscreen is such an important part of your everyday routine. Don't skip it. It does so much good. It reduces the risk of skin cancer. It prevents hyperpigmentation and melanoma. And last but not least, it prevents against photo damage and photo aging. There are tons of anti-aging products out there, but one of the most effective ways to prevent the signs of aging is to wear sunscreen every day. Okay, so now let's talk about the difference between the two different types of sunscreen available in the market today, physical and chemical. What's important to know here is that each type protects you differently. So chemical sunscreens work by absorbing the sun's rays. You'll know it's a chemical sunscreen if you see any of these active ingredients. The good thing about chemical sunscreens is they tend to be easier to rub into your skin without leaving a white residue. The not so good part about chemical sunscreens is that they can smell pretty strongly of chemicals and they can really sting if you have sensitive skin. Physical sunscreens, AKA mineral, AKA sunblock from way back in the day. Physical sunscreens act more like a shield. They sit on the very top of your skin and they deflect and block out all of the sun's rays. The two active ingredients in physical sunscreens are titanium dioxide or zinc oxide or both. The good thing about physical sunscreen is that it's not as irritating for the skin, while the not so good part is that sometimes they can leave a white cast, which makes it not so ideal for people with darker skin. So if you have darker skin, you probably want to avoid a sunscreen with a high percentage of physical UV filters, but there are some brands out there that are finally coming out with tinted physical sunscreens that are more inclusive. If you have sensitive skin, get an all physical or physical and chemical combination sunscreen because chemical sunscreens can really cause some stinging and irritation for you. Whichever type of sunscreen you choose, you'll need to know a little bit about SPF. So SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. The number tells you how long it would take the sun's UVB rays to burn your skin if you applied sunscreen versus if you didn't apply it at all. So if you use a sunscreen with an SPF of 30, it would take you 30 times as long to burn than if you didn't use that sunscreen at all. Your product should be at least an SPF of 30. So one of the most important things to remember when you're applying sunscreen is that more is more. Most people only use a quarter to a half of the recommended amount of sunscreen, and that's just not enough. Not using enough sunscreen means that you won't be getting the amount of protection that's marked on the label. So in order to use enough product, I like to use either a really thick layer or two thinner layers. And I find for my face that a coin size amount is good enough. And for my body, about a shot glass worth or two tablespoons. So I make sure to really get the spots around my eyebrows, my nose, my chin, and the top of, tops of my hand, because those are the areas where I tend to miss the most. And if you have short hair, don't forget the tops of your ears and the back of your neck. So we tend to forget about our lips when it comes to sun protection, but skin cancer can form there too, especially on your lower lip. So don't forget to apply a lip balm or a lipstick with an SPF of 30 or higher. 
So now you've applied all that sunscreen, don't forget you still need to reapply every two hours or after sweating, swimming, or toweling off to make sure that you're still protected. So one myth I really wanted to bust is that higher level SPFs last longer than lower level SPFs. And that's just simply not true. They last the exact same amount of time, so you will still need to reapply even if you have an SPF of 80. And at the end of the day, your regular cleanser will most likely do the trick, but if you're finding that there's still some leftover residue or you're using a waterproof sunscreen, you may need to double cleanse. That means adding a first step using an oil cleanser, a makeup remover, or a cleansing balm. If you don't know what that is, check out my video on cleansers to get caught up. So chemical sunscreens need to get absorbed into the skin in order to work. So you'll need to apply it 15 to 30 minutes before you head out. That way the ingredients can fully bind to your skin and do their job. Make sure to apply it before your moisturizer so it can fully absorb into your skin. Let the sunscreen dry completely before applying your moisturizer. The correct way to incorporate a chemical sunscreen into your routine is cleanser, chemical sunscreen, and moisturizer. If you're using a physical sunscreen, apply it at the end of your morning routine or just before you head out the door and be sure to rub it in until you can't see it. The correct order for incorporating it into your routine is cleanser, moisturizer, physical sunscreen before any of the next steps like primer and makeup. So you can use a moisturizer with added SPF in place of your sunscreen, but just make sure that it has an SPF of at least 30 and you're still reapplying every two hours. If you'll be in direct sunlight all day or if the UV index is really, really high, use a product with higher protection or add another layer before going out and make sure you take that sunscreen with you in your bag. Remember to use other kinds of UV protection, like straight up just not going out during the middle of the day, wearing sunglasses or hats, and staying in the shade. When buying sunscreen or just making sure that what you have at home is actually gonna work, you should think about does it have enough UV protection? That means having an SPF of at least 30 and broad spectrum protection to make sure you're covered for both UVA and UVB rays. Is it easy and comfortable to wear? Is it making you break out or not? If your sunscreen is gentle, has enough protection, and doesn't break you out, then that's amazing. But if it stings, makes you break out, and it isn't even strong enough to work, then it might be time to find another one. If you notice your hyperpigmentation is getting worse, or you see any new freckles or dark spots, then it's probably time to get a stronger one. The bottom line is I recommend that you use a sunscreen with at least SPF of 30 with broad spectrum protection every day, even when it's cloudy. If you're using products that make your skin more sensitive to the sun, like AHAs, BHAs, retinoids, or even some oral medications, then it becomes even more important to wear your sunscreen. Your skin will thank you in the end. So as you can see, sun protection is so important and because skin cancer is one of the top cancers in the US, this was such an important video for me to make. And don't forget, sunscreen is only one of the many ways that you can protect yourself. Staying in the shade, wearing hats, and long sleeves also help. Protecting yourself in the sun is so important and that's why I was so excited to make this video for you guys. If it was helpful to you and you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.